Next, I'd uh, ask uh, Ken Lay, uh, a Burmese civil society activist, to speak. And obviously, uh, there's enormous significance uh, hearing from uh, her, given uh, the transformation that's beginning to take place uh, in, uh, in Burma, in Myanmar. It, it is not something that is complete yet. Uh, but uh, I think it testifies to the power of civil society to uh, bring about change, uh, even in some of the most difficult situations. Uh, so uh, please, Ken. Thank you very much. President Obama, UN Deputy Secretary General, and other distinguished guests, I'm honored and humbled by your invitation to speak here today. To put this in perspective, until 2011, I have never even left Burma. I would like to thank President Obama for initiating this very important discussion. I also appreciate the efforts of the countries around the world that have helped to facilitate the transition and are working to deepen the reforms in my country. I also appreciate Freedom House support for arranging various meetings in New York and Washington, D.C. during my visit to the U.S. Although I will focus on Obama, I believe our experience are likely shared by others. I respectfully salute those civil society actors in this room and around the world for their dedication, sacrifice, and courage. My name is Ken Lee, and I'm a founder of the Triangle Women Support Group, an organization that works to empower women to be decision makers and leaders at home in their communities and in politics. When I was young, I was also involved in Burma's democracy movement. That's why, I, like thousands of others, I was arrested and jailed for my non-violence democratic movement. Today, Burma is finally changing, but the struggle will be long and difficult. Civil society activists still continue to face traditional forms of repression, such as imprisonment and harassment. 50 years of military rule and economic mismanagement will not be undone overnight. But as part of the reforms, the government has begun revisiting the country's law, including those that were previously used to control society. In July, the government has been drafting a new association law. The first draft included many limitations on civil society, including severe penalties and a prohibition on informal associations, which are the principal way that citizens organize in Burma. In response, we mobilized a broad coalition of civil society organizations including environmental groups, health rights activists, women's groups, and labor activists to push for a better law. We also sought the advice of the international community, including groups here with us today, to ensure that the revisions met international norms. We share our recommendations with the government and members of parliament Today, I'm happy to inform you that the revised draft law is satisfactory and it's now before Parliament for consideration. The fact that Bama's draft association law is now significantly improved is a testament to not just a strong domestic response, but to the valuable support of the international community. I would like to share my ideas about kinds of the international community support that have been proven to be useful to our efforts to bolster the reform process, not only in Burma, but also in other countries. First, we have learned enormously from other countries' experience. Groups like the World Movement for Democracy and the International Center for Not-for-Profit Law facilitated the exchange of experience and knowledge with advocacy efforts in other countries as well as the information about international norms and standards. Second, 
international groups such as National Endowment for Democracy and others quickly responded to our request for support to convene a series of meetings among civil society groups and with the government and the MPs to discuss the draft law. Third, political support from the international community has been critically important. Sometimes, coordinated responses from the diplomatic community is more important than financial support, like sometimes sticks, sometimes carrots. Together, we have made progress. If the association law is passed, it will provide a foundation upon which civil society can flourish. However, unless the government recognizes the value of decent and strengthens independent institutions to enforce the law, the benefits of the vibrant independent civil society will never fully realize and the country will suffer as a result. The role of the civil society is crucial to build the democratic society and to implement the global issues such as global warming, poverty alleviation, and public health. However, today, in too many countries, governments seek to limit and restrict civil space by means of strong bureaucratic control, weakening protection mechanism, etc. With support from members of the international community, I firmly believe we can make progress. Together, we can build democratic and open societies where individuals have the opportunity to live with dignity, free from repression and deprivation. Thank you very much. Thank you.